Hello, my name is uh, Joe Reagan, and I work as an occupational therapist with uh, Select Physical Therapy here in Pensacola. Um, very often I'm asked what is the difference between a, an occupational therapist and a physical therapist. Um, the main difference really is that an occupational therapist is going to work mainly with upper extremity and with utilizing uh, functional types of tasks in order to achieve goals whereas a, a physical therapist would use more of like an exercise based uh, treatment program to achieve essentially the same means but they just may be working with uh, with different pathologies. Um, uh, during a typical day for me, I, uh, I basically just evaluate and treat um, patients. Uh, I work mainly with hands, so I work with the elbow, wrist, and, and hand. And so a, a typical day would be maybe I get an arthritis patient uh, that has had like a, a joint replacement in the thumb. I may evaluate that person and based on what the doctor has on his script, I'll probably make uh, a splint uh, for that person and then have them follow uh, like a, uh, more of like an active range of motion program until we can do strengthening uh, when that's cleared by a, by a, a doc or, or by a physician. Um, but that's, that's like a typical, a typical work day for me is uh, between eight and 10 hours a day. Uh, I like to keep it and try and keep it at eight, but that doesn't always, uh, doesn't always happen. But uh, eight to 10 would be typical. In terms of uh, job requirements for becoming an occupational therapist, the, from an education standpoint, you need, uh, the field has shifted to the point now where you, uh, most of the programs are either master's level um, uh, programs or they are, are doctorate. Uh, and that's where we are in, in today's field. Um, in terms of the, the educational requirements for what you want to take for, uh, for courses, you want to be exposed to as many, uh, I call them the ologies, you need to be exposed to as many uh, like biology, um, anatomy, physiology, kinesiology, uh, pathophysiology. Uh, the more that you can be exposed to these types of core classes, the, uh, the better off uh, you'll be and the better prepared you'll be to go into, uh, into this field. Um, bachelor's degrees. Uh, if a person were going to go into uh, occupational therapy, go into the master's or the doctorate level, you would want to um, pursue mainly like exercise, science, um, any, any degree where you're going to be focusing in the sciences. Getting a bachelor's in kinesiology would be a very good, uh, good way to go as well. But uh, any degree where that bachelor's is in science and it's in you know, like with kinesiology, it would be addressing, you know, like how the body moves, you know, so it'll better prepare you down the road. An exercise science degree is kind of the same thing where you're learning a lot about uh, just uh, like exercise programs, how the body moves, how it responds to training, uh, those types of things. So I think those two degrees would be good baselines. The uh, now with licensure, uh, in order to become certified in a uh, in a state, if you're practicing uh, in, you know, we won't name any states, but say you're, uh, you take a board exam, you're licensed to practice in that state. And if you wanted to move to another state, then you just find out what you need to be licensed um, and uh, to practice in that state because it may vary. Uh, it's going to be you know mainly similar, but uh, it's going to vary you know a little. Um, but uh, at the once you've gone through your, uh, the, the master's or the doctorate level that you're trying to achieve, at the end of any uh, of those programs, uh, you'll go to uh, an internship. And typically an internship is gonna be about six months, six to eight months on, uh, on the road where you'll go to different clinical settings to, uh, to start to apply what you've learned uh, during, your, uh, during your classroom time and then during your uh, your level one uh, uh, internships, where a level one internship is where you would, uh, you're basically just going into a clinic and you're observing, which prepares you for your, your internship and your level two, where you're going in and you're basically just going in under your clinical instructor and learning from and practicing under uh, their license, which is uh, how it works. 
The, uh, the best and worst parts of, uh, of this uh, type of job start off with the positive, which is the best. Um, the best part of, of this job, and for me, the most fun part of, of this job is watching someone get better. Um, I have always, in all the years that I've been practicing, that is the thing that excites me the most is when a person is getting better or when you contribute to a person uh, that is getting better. And so I suppose if that's the best part, uh, the worst part might be just the opposite where maybe you have a person or you're working with a patient who's not uh, as, as compliant or they're not dialed into what you the program that you want to that you want to do with them or you want to work with them and they for whatever reason they just don't follow through or they don't uh, completely just sort of uh, participate and that is probably the the worst part because then you get instead of the good outcome you get the opposite you get a maybe a poor or a bad outcome and that that's just not just not fun it's not a good part of the job um, but other than that, um, I'd have to say that, that that'd be the thing that I think is the worst. My, uh, my final advice to, to a person that wanted to get into this field is really try to make a, a very uh, informed uh, decision about which way you want your career to go. Um, it's a, because it is a long, process uh, going through a master's or a doctorate level uh, degree. So there is a lot of commitment there and it would you wouldn't want to get three four years into it and say I don't think I want this. So I would I would say really know that you want to get into it. Volunteer before uh, you get into your program so that way you have exposure to uh, the program that you want to go into. So that way you're 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 getting a feel so to speak. Um, the, I think one of the greatest things about working within this field, the advantages to being in this uh, career, is that you can, there's so many avenues to pursue. If you wanted to work in, with older folks in geriatrics, you can do that. If you want to work, if you're, uh, your slant is pediatrics, you can go into pediatrics. You can work in hands, you could work in a sports clinic, you can work in a nursing home or a hospital or a rehab center and for that reason there's so many down the road there's so many advantages to employment that it you know the really you're you're only limited by your imagination because you could find a setting that works for you that is set for you you know basically so but that would be my uh, my advice on on that